Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and we are back with another weekly ways video where if this is your first time finding this channel, my name is Gerard and on this channel we are talking about fragrances. I wore seven fragrances last week. In this video, I will be talking about all seven. So if that is content that you wanna see more of, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on bell notifications so you are updated whenever I upload something new. I'm not gonna waste any time. I have my Dunks iced coffee ready to go. Let's jump into the list, starting with Sunday. So on Sunday, I went into the city with my family and we actually met up with a family friend there. She was with her kids. We took the kids on the swan boats in Boston Common and later went to lunch on Newberry Street. So we had a really amazing day. It was beautiful out, a little hot. So I wanted something really fresh, clean, effortless. Scent I decided to go with is Kinetic from Toomey. And I have been impressed, guys, with this house ever since the first fragrance that I tried. And I haven't had a bad fragrance from this house yet. And you guys talked about this one probably more than any other. Does this smell like Dior Sauvage? Yes. However, for me, it's a little bit more grown up, a little bit more mature. My favorite part of Sauvage has always been that balance between being fresh and spicy while also having this warmth to it that is really inviting, really easy to like, obviously that Ambroxan helps it along. However, this one I think really shines with the Mandarin orange note up top. It really sets it apart from the Sauvage DNA. It is a nice addition. If Sauvage is the animated version, this is the live action version, especially from newer formulations of Dior Sauvage. Also what I would call an above average performer here. So much like you guys described, I found this one hard not to like, and I had tested it a few times on skin. I have a Toomey outlet store near me and they actually had this available to try. And I tried it, really liked it, ended up grabbing a bottle. Kinetic from Toomey. Scent I wore on Monday has a lot of scent memory for me that I tie to this one. And I'll get into it. Scent we are talking about is Mr. Burberry Indigo. And this one reminds me every single time of camping, really glamping. Oh, there we go. Really glamping with my family. We spent some time at Auto Camp, which is down the Cape, not far from where we live. And a few years back, when my oldest daughter was a little younger, we went down there and spent a weekend. There, they have these 31-foot airstreams. They have a fire pit. We were making s'mores. They have games and stuff right on site. So it was a really fun time. Perfect little getaway, weekend getaway for two busy professionals with a young kid. And this is the scent I brought. I didn't think, I think I might have brought one other fragrance with me, but this one is the one that stood out. And now every time I smell this, I think of that memory. So really special scent for me. This is a Francis Kirk de Jean creation and the quality is there. It's my favorite from this particular line, in my opinion. I don't think this one gets enough love or talked about enough. It has that mineralic, salty, aquatic vibe to it, much like an Aqua de Jo Profondo, but the twist here is the rosemary, the mint. It has this really herbal tea-like quality to it, but the mint really stands out. It smells like a fresh muddled drink. It's a little bit spicy and effervescent, it pops and sparkles and this stuff is amazing. I think, I would like to think that I, I will always have this in the collection, but for what you're paying here, I think you're getting a really high quality scent. Performs as I would expect it to for a, you know, a brighter, fresher, more aquatic type fragrance. But I think you guys will like this one too. It has just something special about it, nice quality to it and different than your typical salty, mineralic, aquatic. Really nice fragrance overall. And again, I'm a little biased because I have the scent memory tied to it, but incredible fragrance, Mr. Burberry Indigo. This next one for me is miles better than the OG. And the OG gets more love than this one, no question. The scent we are talking about is Dunhill Century Blue. And much like the Francis Kirk de Jean, Mr. Burberry Indigo, Big dent in that scent, big dent in this one as well. One of my favorites. And this one is cheap. It remains cheap. Doesn't smell cheap. This 
has a soft powderiness to it. It's a blue fragrance, but the twist here is the note of iris. It's a little bit fruity and sweet, very woody. And I just love this stuff. There's a, an addictive quality, especially in the opening. Again, mandarin orange being utilized here, which is one of my favorite notes in perfume. And if I was to ever create a scent, I talk about this often, that would probably be a top note that I would use. It has this kind of oceanside breezy vibe to it, which I find very calming, which is also why this is a scent that I, from time to time, will wear to bed. If I was working late or something, I take a late shower, I'll pop a few sprays of this on. It helps me kind of relax and chill out and settle in for the night. So not the best performer, but one that I'm not afraid to over spray. And because it is so cheap, again, spray with reckless abandon. Really nice fragrance. And the OG Dunhill Century, not my favorite. Has a note of cypria oil in there that just smells like pee to me. It smells like hay, like urine. I don't know. It's just not, doesn't work on my skin, put it that way. Dunhill Century, blue. This one I picked up pretty recently in maybe two videos ago, two rack store hauls ago. Sam, what you're talking about is Tommy Vibrant Summer. And, you know, the more I spent time with this, the more it, it grew on me. Initially, I thought, although a nice scent, nothing really special. And I still feel that way. I don't think this is anything that you need to run out and buy right now, but it does have some uniqueness to it. The JPG comparison to Le Beau is there for me initially. It will smell a little bit like that scent. Now, in the air, it's very synthetic, uh, and that carries over till the life of the scent. It's a synthetic fragrance from start to finish, but it's not a bad synthetic. It's You have to like aldehydic, fuzzy, synthetic fragrances, and it has that effect to it. The comparison to Le Beau, it's a more airy, aquatic version. It's not quite as dense or syrupy or tonka-heavy as that fragrance is, but the remnants of that scent, like a watered-down version of it, I definitely pick up in the opening here. But what this reminds me of is just a really easygoing summertime fragrance. Fun on the beach with friends. Going out, bringing a cooler, having some goodies in there, maybe some adult beverages, music playing, that type of vibe to this scent. So really easy to grab and go and wear on super hot days. And for 22 bucks, you can't really go wrong. It's one of the better summertime flankers that I've tried in a while. So it's kind of a standout for me for just like that. They nailed it in terms of the marketing stuff, Some vibrant summer, you definitely get that vibe. So it's true to the name. Performance here, it stuck around a little bit longer than I had anticipated. Although not an amazing performer, it doesn't project like a beast. It, it kind of stuck around on my clothes and uh, it surprised me in that way. But again, having that synthetic vibe, nothing really natural smelling about this fragrance, but it doesn't smell bad either. I actually kind of like it. Tommy, Vibrant Summer. So you want to talk about big, dense. This one is almost empty. Same way you're talking about is Versace Poro. And I do have a backup on all this, a smaller guy. Um, but this is one that I like to think I will always have in the collection because it's a classic. It has this sharp, metallic, citrusy feel to it. It does get compared a lot to fragrances like Chanel Lorum Sport and Masoni Wave, which gained a ton of popularity a couple years ago. And this one, though, is more floral for me. It's sharper. It's more metallic. It's a little brighter. It's a little bit more in-your-face projection-wise. But with that being said, it doesn't last very long. It doesn't project very long. However, you just feel super fresh. This is like the definition of a fresh fragrance for me personally. There's really two occasions where I find myself reaching for this one. Really hot days where I don't want to think about what I'm going to wear. Uh, I just know it's going to work. It's going to smell good. And in the wintertime, I reach for this periodically. I'll wear this. Well, I definitely wear this to work out too because it's kind of easy just to, you smell clean, you smell fresh. But in the wintertime when I haven't, you just want something a little bit uplifting to kind of remind you spring and summer are on their way. I live in New England, so the winters can be brutal here. And there are just days where I reach for this just to smell it and it kind of gets me in that mood. So really nice scent, doesn't last very long, but I mean, at this point, super familiar fragrance that really belongs probably in every collection. 
Versace Poro. So this one is from my most recent rack store pickup, and I am shocked by how much I actually like this one. Unfortunately, my wife isn't crazy about it, but I'm keeping this one around because I really enjoy it. Scent we are talking about is Marikai Essence Eau de Parfum from Paddock Maison. And you guys had mentioned this house to me uh, a couple times. I had never heard of it. And wow. I mean, I got this for 90 bucks. And as I said in my Rackstore pickup video, this one I didn't really see anywhere cheaper than like $240. 220 bucks around that price point. So it is considered a luxury brand. I think really what it is, is it's a smaller house that they market through places like Instagram and TikTok. So they're not really a household name. Uh, and I think you might only be able to grab this online. I could be wrong there, but the scent, let's talk about that because I initially thought I would be turned off by the white florals in here. You have orange blossom, you have jasmine sambac, and typically those notes for me, the white florals, they don't jive with me. They smell very feminine. It's hard for me to pull those off. Whoever the perfumer is on this, they showed a lot of restraint. They used a vanilla, they used black currant, this fruity earthiness. There's a little bit of a smoky wood here. So as feminine as this is in the opening, that vanilla, the black currant, really balances it out nicely, really kind of brings it more towards the middle, even masculine later on the scent. So really impressed with this fragrance overall, really high quality smelling performance. The sillage is where this turns it up. The sillage is incredible. And I did like five sprays and that may have been one too many. That's how powerful this is for me. There's also notes in here like cinnamon and cacao, which add a lot of depth and complexity to the scent. I love how it changes. I mean, I wasn't expecting to find this. I'm so glad I picked it up. Really enjoying this one right now, and I can't wait to look more into this house. A couple of you guys mentioned vert from the house that I need to try, so we'll see where that goes. But Marikai Essence Eau de Parfum from Paddock Maison. Finally, on Saturday, I reached for this scent. And I had initially had plans with a friend that I hadn't seen in a while. We were going to go grab something to eat, but then my dog fell ill. He hasn't felt good for a couple of days. So I kind of wanted to stick around the house and keep a closer eye on him. But this is the fragrance I wore. It was sent to me by my friend and supporter of the channel, Danny, who has been amazing. And I'm so appreciative, Danny. Thank you for sending this my way. And actually, I'm going to pay it forward. So if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll tell you how I'm going to do that. But the scent we are talking about is Lome IDL Cologne from Guerlain. Now, I can't believe, guys, at one point, this thing was available at rack stores uh, at a discount. Really nice atomizer on here. And my friend Ryan from Grown Man Style, if you guys have an opportunity to check out his channel, you should. He had sent a sample of this to me, and I remember trying it for the first time, knowing a little bit about the scent, knowing that it had a lot of hype behind it, and trying it and just thinking, wow, I mean, this lives up to the hype. It smells amazing. Essentially a summer version of the OG. I actually own the Eau de Parfum, which is my favorite from the line, but essentially, uh, as I said, a version, a summery version, lighter version of the OG. They forego the spiciness of those fragrances and they really lean into that milky lactonic almond note here. So it's like a creamy almond, which is just stunning balanced with the most incredible citrus that I've smelled in a fragrance. One of the most incredible citruses, like girl, only girl on can do it this way. And the citrus is just alive and vibrant and just mood enhancing. And I absolutely love that combination of those two things, the almond and the citrus. The milky almond citrus, incredible. Also for a lighter, more finessed fragrance like this one, it lingers for a long time. I could smell it on my clothes, pulling my shirt over my head later that night. I could still smell the fragrance on me. And it's not a big projector, which is okay. This is subtle like a lot of girl lines are. Just a classiness to them. They're, they're meant to sort of be discovered. They're not meant to fill rooms. And that's no different here. But that's what I love about this line. That's what I love about these fragrances. They're a little bit subtle, but if you know, you know kind of thing. I think I would find myself wearing this most likely on a summer night out. I think that's where this would really be ideal. Summer night out to dinner, drinks, just meeting with friends and relaxing. 
man, incredible stuff. And as I said, I want to pay it forward. We are close to 15,000 subscribers. So what I am going to do is a giveaway at 15K. I'm going to give away not one, but two bottles of Guerlain's Eau de Parfum. It is my favorite from the line. Amazing fragrance. I'll be giving away two bottles of that. So we just need to hit 15K. We're almost there, roughly 400 subscribers away from that. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you're not. And then once we hit 15K, we will be able to uh, get a little more into how to enter that contest. That's all I have today, guys, all seven fragrances that I wore last week. I would love to know what your weekly rotation was. Drop it in the comment section down below. I always love hearing what you guys are wearing. But if you like what you saw today, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video, hit that bell notification so you are updated whenever I upload new content. But until then, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. <music>